this is the grey kangaroo from 2023. Let's just let's just do this. Um, yeah, this is really easy to draw some lines through all of these shapes to make rectangles. There they are. Sorry, to make trapeziums. Uh, this is trapezium, 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 and trapezium, trapezium. There's lots of other ways. You can just go straight through this to make two rectangles because, of course, rectangles also count as trapeziums. But anyway, triangle is the one you can't do it on. This one here, a thousand is a multiple of four, so therefore the smallest three-digit multiple of four is going to be nine. Sorry, the largest is going to be nine and six. The smallest four-digit multiple of three. Now, to be a multiple of three, your digits have to sum to a multiple of three. So one zero 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 won't work because that adds to one. Nor one zero zero one, but one zero zero two will because that adds to three. The digit sum adds to three. Uh, so that's good. So it's going to be this plus this, which is this, I believe. Uh, number three. So this is a little bit more confusing, but he wants the numbers in these circles to add up to the numbers on the lengths of these lines here. So okay, let's just make this an eight and this a one because that adds to 9, that makes this need to be a 0, because that adds to 8. You need to make this a 12, because that adds up to 13. And therefore the question mark will be 0 plus 12, which is 12. Um, where did I get the 8 and 1 from? Well, I just wrote them down, because it's at least fairly obvious to me, having done lots of these challenges, that if you use any numbers here, it will still work. And indeed, just do it now. Just do a 5 and a 4 here. Do the rest of the thing, and it will, come, it will come to 12 anyway. So just try stuff. Here, uh, this length here is going to fold over to be in the top section, and the further away you are up here, that will fall to be the bottom section. So this length here is going to go there. This length here is going to go down to here. So we make a five first. This is going to fold over on the entire thing. This is going to fold over to the bottom. So it's a five, then a six. The only one that goes five, six is this. You can verify that that's going to make a nine if you want to. John has 150 coins. 40% of 150 is 60. 10% is 15 times by four. This, of course, therefore is 90. If you flip over 15 of these, you'll decrease this by 15 to get to 75. And you'll, of course, increase this by 15 to get to 75 and therefore it's going to be 15. Question number six. So when you have five discs, each of a different size, it doesn't matter which of the five discs you take. Like any three discs will be able to stack smallest to largest because none of the same size or anything like that. So you, it, it's just a case of how many ways can you take three discs because there'll be a unique stack for any three discs just from smallest to largest or whatever. So this is just a question of how many ways are there to choose three discs from five. And if you've been reading ahead a little bit, you'll know this is just a function. This is five choose three, which is this. Five factorial over three factorial, two factorial. Uh, this is the factorial just means times by every integer below it, like this. All of this cancels all of that. And you get five times four is 20 divided by two times one is two. 20 divided by two is 10. Um, so yeah, worth reading ahead on choose functions and, and permutation, that kind of thing, if you want to take math challenge seriously. Um, number seven. So these columns are going to add to the same thing. We're going to use the digits one to eight. That means eight must pair with one. Because if it didn't, like if 8 paired with 2, that sums to 10. And then what are you going to pair 1 with to make 10, right? If 8's the largest thing you can use. So 8 has to go with 1. That means the sum is 9, which means that has to go with a 5. That has to go with a uh, 6, also to sum to 9. So these are going to be the 2 and the 7. That's the only ones you've got left over. Now the rows also have to sum to the same thing. Currently this row adds to 11. This row currently adds to 16. So therefore, if I put the 7 here and the 2 here, um, not only will we slide to 9 here, but this one will become 18, this one will also become 18, and we'll be good to go. Uh, 8, we can see here we've got three consecutive numbers. Now, the first digit changes from here to here, which means this must have been something 99 going to something 00. zero. So that's the first thing I'll say. Um, and then over here, this is 0 and then 1, because that's how... And we just don't know the, hun the, the hundreds digit yet, except we do, because the square is now 1. So the square is a 1, which means the heart is a 2. And those are our three numbers. The next number is going to be 202, which is heart, triangle, and then heart again, because heart is 2, which is this one here. Question number 9 is the first question that I uh, absolutely don't know how you're supposed to do this, because it's not the way that I did it. But I called the entire um, diameter of this semicircle 2R, all the semicircles have the same diameter and radius. So that's just 2R. I'm solving for R, of course. So this distance here is 20, is, sorry, is 2R minus 22. Just, of course, the whole thing minus this 22. Which makes this length here, this little length here, um, 2R minus the red minus 12. Um, to get this, 2R minus 2R is nothing. Minus 12 minus, minus 22 is 10. So this length is 10. But by symmetry, you can do the same thing going the other way. And you also get that this length is 10, which means we have 2R equals 10 plus 16 plus 10, and therefore r is 18, and we'll have our answer. Not sure what the actual way of doing that is, but that is, I guess, one acceptable method. Draw a cube, and uh, you want uh, one to colour in one edge, or you want to colour in as few edges as possible to make all of the sides have one red edge next to them. So if you just make this edge red, it's not going to matter where you start, of course, it's all going to be symmetrical. That makes this, this face and the other face there behind us 
uh, both have a red edge. So okay, well, we've done those two faces then. What about these two, where we can cover those two by making this edge red? And the only one faces we're missing are the back one and the bottom one. But if we make the, 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 the edge running on the bottom there red, that covers the bottom and the back there. So I think we have every face covered now, and we've done it with three things, so I think that'll be good. Uh, 11, so first thing we'll do is count up how many matchsticks each of these integers take to use, which is this. So this is just the number of matchsticks each of those um, symbols take to make. Now we want to use exactly six matchsticks. So we could just write down a zero, except that's not a positive integer. We could just write down a six or a nine, so that's fine. We can just write down six and nine. But we can also combine a one and a four right? Because that would make six match six in total. So we can use six, nine, and then 14. But we can also do 41, right? Because you can just swap them over. We can also do 77, because two lots of three will make six. So we can do 77. And finally, probably the most tricky one to spot, you can do one, 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 right? Because you can do two plus two plus two is also six. And that'll be all of them. And I think there are six uh, numbers we can therefore make. Uh, question number 12, then uh, we've got a square 10 centimeters long. I imagine a lot of people got this one wrong. Um, just it's the kind of thing that I think people would miss solutions. We want to find all the points in the world that are exactly 10 centimeters away from two of the vertices. Now the first ones I thought of were just the vertices themselves. This vertice here is 10 centimeters away from two vertices, so that will work. But of course so will this, this, and this. So four corners will work, or four vertices of the shape. Also you can go inside the shape. If you pick like this point here, that could be 10 cement centimeters exactly away from here and from there. So that should work if this is an equilateral triangle. So there's, as well, four points in the middle of this shape here, here to be 10 centimeters away from that one and that one, here to be this one, this one, and so on. So that's four inside. But you've also got outside, like over here, if that distance is 10 and that distance is 10, um, you can also do four, uh, four points outside the shape here, down here, over here, and over here to get four outside the shape as well. Um, so I think that'll be my answer. I've got 12 of them. I wasn't convinced there weren't places elsewhere, but the answer is 12, like the biggest answer is, is 12. So I found 12, it must be it. And, uh, and we'll move on. This is an isosceles triangle, PQ is equal to PR. Uh, now if that's 40 degrees, 180 minus 40 is 140, divided by two is 70. So this angle here is 70 and so is this one. If we call this X and we call this X, that makes this 70 minus X, which makes this based on this triangle here, 180 minus X minus 70 minus X. Uh, which I believe makes uh, minus x minus minus makes plus, so the x's cancel. 180 minus 70 is 110, uh, and therefore um, on a straight line here, 180 minus 110 gives us 70 degrees here, I believe. Question number 14 is uh, just a very complicated way of setting up a simultaneous equation. If you call the inner the number of points you score by hitting the inner circle A, the number of points you score by hitting the middle middle ring B, and the outer ring C, here we can say Tom three lots of A plus one lot of B plus two lots of C equals 46. And here we can say one lot of A plus two, three lots of B plus two lots of C equals 34. And we're looking for how many did Lily score? Well, that's two A plus two B plus two C. So we're looking for what this is. This is a very standard trick. Just add together these two things. You get this, which is very convenient because now we can just divide by two and we end up with that. Question number 15. So we have, uh, the, the key thing inside of all this information is that each square is 25, so each length is 5, 5 times 5 is 25. We also have that um, the, the smaller rectangles hit the larger one halfway along the side, so if this length is x, so is this length. So we have x and x, and we have 5 and 5, and also over there. And we have that this length is 15, because it's 5 plus 5 plus 5, and this length here is 5. Now the key thing to realize here is that these triangles running around the outside are similar to each other. If you call this angle A, this is of course 90 degrees, this is 90 minus A, but that's of course 90 degrees, which makes that one A as well. Um, and so therefore we have some similar triangles just with these same angles in them, which means that um, because this triangle is similar to this triangle and this hypotenuse is five and this hypotenuse is 15, that means this triangle is three times bigger than that one. So what I can do is if, if this side here is called X, this side here must be 3x. I can also call this one x over 3 as well, which I will do later. But for now, I'll just do Pythagoras x squared plus 3x squared plus 15, equals 15 squared. Of course, the square the 3 and the x, put them together. I'm going to leave it there for a second. Like I said, you can call this little length down here or over here x over 3. And the area of the larger rectangle is this plus this times this plus this, which I believe looks like this. This is 9 thirds plus 1 third is 10 thirds. 
Um, you can swap the 2 and the 10 here. The reason I want to do that, and of course multiply the x's, is because I know what 10x squared is. It's 225. Divide that by 3 for 75, and then times it by 2 for 150, and, uh, and you'll have your answer. 16. There's a very similar question to this being asked a few years ago um, that was more of a trick question than this one was. Um, but yeah, this is quite nice. Two, 2,023 consecutive integers sum to this. Well, the thing is, like, what two consecutive integers add to that? Well, 1,011 and 1,012, I think. So how are you going to get 2,023 integers to add up to it? Well, you just use a load of negatives and get them to cancel. I think list this will do. Because from minus 1,010 all the way to minus 1, that will cancel with the 1 all the way to 1,010. These two numbers I've already referenced add up to 2,023. So this is definitely a good sum. And then we just work out, well, is this actually 2,023 integers? Well, yeah, because there's 1,010 here. There's 1,010 here. There's one extra one here that makes 2,021, 2,022, 2,023. So yeah, this is perfect. The digit sum of the largest integer is 1 plus 1 plus 2, which is 4. And, uh, and we have our answer. Kind of a nice question. We have a circle here, uh, beavers and kangaroos uh, in the circle. There are three beavers and no beaver is standing next to other. So we'll set kind of this kind of thing up, I guess, first. And we want to separate all of these with a kangaroo, so that's fine. Now, three kangaroos stand next to another kangaroo. So if we put this kangaroo next to a buddy here, but this immediately makes two kangaroos sitting next to each other. So if we put another one here, that's four kangaroos sitting next to each other. One, two, three, and four. And that doesn't work. We want three of them. So the only way to do this is to put another kangaroo in this bunch instead, like here. Now this one, this one, and this one are next to a kangaroo each. This one's next to two, but it didn't specify that's a problem. And so I think we have five kangaroos in the circle, and I think this circle works quite well. Now 18. So we've got seven dwarves. Uh, most important thing to start with is that Doc plays six games. Now, of course, Doc can't play himself. So therefore, Doc plays every other member. Um, which tells us a few things. It firstly tells us Dopey plays at least one game because he's definitely playing Doc. It also tells us that Grumpy, who only played one game, only played Doc, didn't play anyone else. So those are the two things we'll get from that. Um, Happy played five games. Again, he can't play himself and we know he can't play Grumpy. So therefore, he's played every other um, dwarf, right? Um, because he, five games, the seven dwarfs, he's played five. He can't play himself and he can't play Grumpy. So he plays everyone else which means he plays Dopey. Um, so therefore we know Dopey now plays at least two games. It also tells us, because Sneezy played two, we've said that Sneezy played Doc, because Doc played everyone. Um, but also we've now claimed that Sneezy plays Happy, because Happy plays everyone except for Grumpy. Um, so therefore Sneezy's not going to play anyone else. Then we go to Bashful. Bashful plays four games. Again, he doesn't play himself, and we've also said that he doesn't play Grumpy, and he doesn't play Sneezy. So therefore he's playing every other, uh, every other dwarf, which includes, of course, Dopey. So therefore, Dopey is playing three games, um, and uh, and all of Sleepy's games are also accounted for, right? Because Sleepy is now having to play Doc, Happy, and Bashful. So I think that's everything done. I think we've accounted for every game here, and so therefore, Dopey is just playing three games. Uh, 19, so integers 1 to 9 in these nine kind of areas here. Um, the product of the integers in any two regions with a common edge is no more than 15. Now, that's interesting because, of course, 9 times anything bigger than 1 is bigger than 15, so 9 can only go next to 1. We'll get rid of this. 9 can only go next to 1, um, which means that 9 has to go in one of these two boxes over here, and 1 has to go in the middle, because that's the only. these are the only two areas that only share one edge. And the same is true for 8. 8 can only go next to 1 as well, because 8 times 2 is 16, so it has to go here, except we could swap those over, so we'll just keep in our minds here that there are two ways of setting this up originally. So we'll times, whatever system we have, we'll times the answer by two, because we could just swap these two over. Now, when we get to seven and six, seven and six can be doubled, but they can't be tripled. So seven and six have to be next to, of course, a one, that was fine, but also next to a two. So we're going to have to put those in one of these squares here and put the two next to both of them. So let's put the seven here. That forces, now the six can't go down here, because the 6 has to be next to a 2, but so does the 7. So if you put the 7 here, the 6 has to go here with the 2 in the middle. Now just go back for a second, because like I said, there are two options to swap these two things over. There are now four places you could put this 7. But once you put the 7 in one of those four places, the 6 has to go in the one next to it, so that the 2 can go next to them. So we've got two choices to set these up, and we've got four choices to set the 7 up. So currently there could have been eight ways of doing this, 2 times 4, currently eight ways of doing it. And now we finish up here, 
Um, we've only got the five, the six, and the sorry, the five, the four, and the three left. Five and four can be tripled, um, so they're going to have to go next to each other. Just choose one of the two places to put the five, put the four in the other one, and then leave the three down here. And um, I think we're going to have two because of these two choices. Four choices for the seven, so that's two times four is eight, times two choices to put the five makes 16 options, I believe. At 20, we've got twice as many children and adults, so call the number of children 2n, call the number of adults n. The age of each person at the table, positive integer greater than 1, fine. Sum of the adults is 156. So let's just call, um, well, I'll set this up first, using this mean age of the children. Now, the mean age of the children is the sum of the children's age divided by how many there are, which is 2n. So that's the mean age of the children. Now, that's 80% less, so therefore 0 0.2 times the mean age of the whole group. So the sum of everyone divided by the total number of people, which is 3n. So I think this is my setup. Now, I'm going to call some things stuff here. So I'm going to say that the sum of the children is just called S. And I'm going to say that the sum of everyone is, of course, the sum of the children plus the sum of the adults. And I'll call the sum of the adults SA for sum of the adults. Except SA is 156, so I'll put that in. And now, of course, I think I can just sort this out. The ends will cancel down here, which is good. Um, it's a good thing I wanted that to happen. 0 0.2 is the same as 1 fifth. Times these things together. Uh, cross multiply. Take away 2S, divide by 13, and you end up with um, that the sum of the children, which I define to be s, is equal to 24. Uh, good. Question 21. Martin's in a queue. This, this, this is one of those interesting questions that feels like there's not enough information, and then there just kind of is. Uh, the number of people in the queue is a multiple of three. He notices that he has as, exactly as many people in front of him as behind. Now, that's interesting, because say that he has an even number of people in front of him, and therefore he has an even number behind, behind him, but then even in front of him, then him, plus an even behind him is an odd number of people in total. But likewise, if he has an odd number in front of him, and then him, and then an odd number behind him, odd plus him plus odd is still odd. So there is definitely an odd number of people in this queue. Either odd plus one plus odd, or even plus one plus even, either of those options is definitely odd. So this is an odd multiple of three. Not just a multiple of three, it's an odd multiple of three. Now, two friends are behind him in 19th place and 28th place. In which position is Martin? So odd multiples of three, he, there can't be 27 people because there are, there's someone in the 28th place. The next odd multiple is 33. So let's just question that. Well, what happens if there are 33 people in the queue? Well, that would make, I think it look like this and be 16, him 16, right? Because that adds up to 32 and then him makes 33. And this works, right? Because 19th place, he's the 17th place. The 19th is behind him and so is the 28th. And the thing is, this is actually the only thing that works, because if you go to the next odd multiple of 3, which is 39, um, you end up with him being in 19th place, and so his body can't be. And if you go lower than this, then of course 28th place doesn't exist. So this is actually the only thing that works, and he's definitely in the 17th place. 22 is a, a really interesting question. Um, I actually, it's the only question that I skipped, because I looked at it and I was like, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Um, and then I came back to it and it took literally like 10 seconds. Because what I decided was, if you don't know how to do a question, just try something, right? So I, I spent five minutes doing 23, 24, 25, came back to this, still didn't have any idea what to do. So I just tried something. I just said, okay, what happens if all eight of these mice migrate to that house? Like, just what happens? What happens there? Well, you want 10 in the house in the end. So you're going to need another two to come from this house, which means three of them are going to go to this house. So, okay, this is good. This makes 10 people over here. This makes all of these moved, and it makes all of these moved. Now, where do these seven go? Well, I need four in this house. So four of them need to go up to here, and three of them need to go across to here. And then the three coming from here and the three coming from there make six in there. And this works. This just works. Everything about this works. We've got the right number moving away. We've got the right number coming into every house. And therefore, there are 11 people going on the bottom row. And this was super fortunate that I found this first time, because I then did try something else. I said, okay, what happens if seven go instead? Um, and when you just run through this logically, right, you need another three to come from this house, means two are going this way. Um, one from this house is actually going upwards as well, because only seven are going this way. These seven, you need one to go this way to make the four. Um, sorry, you need... Uh, uh, what am I talking about here? Sorry. Uh, so seven and then three make ten. Then you need... Uh, how have I got this arrow here? No, oh, sorry, two going this way means four have to go this way to make the six in total, which means three more can go that way, um, and then one goes this way. But this doesn't quite work. Does it work? Uh, is there something that doesn't quite work about this, or did I just fluke it? Uh, does this work? One, three, 
3, 10, 6, and then you also get 11. Okay, so it's just one of those questions that just kind of always works, I guess, which is nice of it. Um, yeah, cool. Anyway, question 23 is a lovely question. Um, you're, so you've got this sum here, which you're told is 1015. What happens if you just put two of those sums together? You obviously double the answer, which is 2030. And 2030 is great because it's exactly seven more than this. So now you just do the exact same sum without this bottom seven, and uh, you end up with 2023. And you're using one, two, three, four, five, six, sevens. Very proud of myself for getting that in, uh, in very quick time. Question 24. We've got uh, six consecutive numbers on six pieces of paper. The, now, the difficulty with this question is understanding what on earth it's talking about. It took a few reads for me to understand to, to what this was going on. Um, but you've got six pieces of paper, and you put a number on each. You then stuck two pieces on each of three coins. So these numbers are sort of paired up right? Um, on each of these three coins. He then tosses three coins, he gets six, seven, and eight. Now that's important because it means six, seven, and eight are all on different coins. So that's kind of relevant and colors them red. And the second, he gets this sum. On the third, he gets this sum. These are the numbers that he sees when he flips them. Um, what's the sum of the, the remaining white pieces? Now these numbers are consecutive. So six, seven, and eight are in there somewhere, but there are six numbers that are consecutive that include six, seven, and eight. The only options are these. Those are the only four ways. So the answer is one of these four things. And actually, you can get to the answer, very, and also six, seven, and eight are on different coins, is what I said before as well. You can get to the answer very quickly here, because these numbers are fairly limiting. Like, if you go to this one, the highest three coins here are six, seven, and eight. If you just add six, seven, and eight, you get to 21, which isn't 23. So you can't make 23 from this set of numbers. So that just goes away immediately. Um, but also this 17 is kind of interesting as well, because w with six, seven, and eight adding to 17, sorry, adding to 21, you can't make 17 from this list. So we're just immediately down to two lists. Um, but also, 5, 6, and 7 is, is 20. That can't be 28. That must be a misclick. Is this 18? Uh, is 11? Yeah, this is 18, sorry. So that's 18. Um, but that's also kind of interesting because, of course, that's still too high, right? That's still too high. Um, that's not 17. That's still too high. So this is never making 17. And so this is literally the only option you have without any further work as to whether it's even possible. If you do think about it a bit, um, you can work out this is totally doable, it makes all this. But since it's the only option available, we just have to go with it. Uh, and of course, the sum of the remaining bases, not the six, seven, eight, is just four plus five plus nine, uh, which is 18, I believe, I hope. I think it is good. Good, question number 25 is about a rugby team who score a few points in their seventh, eighth, and ninth game. And, uh, and yeah, they, they're mean points per game. It's another mean question, which is interesting that they've done this twice. So let's just define uh, the sum of points after the six games to be S of six. Now, what this is all telling us, now the sum of these three numbers is this. So what this is telling us is that the sum, that the mean after nine games is more than the mean after six games. The mean after nine games is the sum of all the points after nine divided by nine, and the mean after the first six is the sum of the first six, which is the cis divided by six. So I think we get this. This is the sum after nine games. It's S of six plus these three numbers divided by nine is bigger than S of six divided by six. Uh, let's just sort this out. I think I divided everything by three first just to make the numbers a bit easier. And uh, and then, yeah, let's cross multiply and uh, sort it out. We get this. So I think the sum of the first six games is less than 132. Now, they give us some more stuff here. The tenth After the 10th game, the mean number needs to be bigger than 22. So the sum after the first 10, which is just this plus this, plus the number of points they score in the 10th game, divided by 10, needs to be bigger than 22. 10, because there's 10 games now. This is the sum of the first nine games, plus this, uh, this is what I've just defined to be the points in the 10th game. But of course, I think I can times by 10, I can take away 66, and now, I know this number is less than 132. Let's make this as, I'm, I'm looking for the minimum amount they can score in the 10th game. So let's make this as big as possible, which I think is 131. Take it away, and I think I end up with B, P is bigger than 23. And so I therefore think it should be 24. Uh, 